Hey there, welcome to the Wadcast Podcast. I'm your host, Eddie Ift. Each and every week, I bring you one of the top podcasts in the fitness world, in the health and fitness, in whatever space we're in. We talk CrossFit, we talk endurance, running, racing, uh, all things elite, coaching, whatever it is. Uh, there's a lot here, a lot to, uh, I hate the word unpack. I hate, there's a whole bunch of new words, thanks to politics, unpacking, pivoting, all these words. I don't like them. I'm just going to tell you this. Uh, this show, uh, if it's the first time listening, uh, my, my guest tonight is an old friend, uh, seven time world champion in his own mind, Hunter McIntyre. Uh, he's one of the top Spartan racers in the world, Spartan, tough mutter. Uh, he's done a lot of things. He's been to the CrossFit games. He's, uh, one broken skull ranch. He's tons and tons and tons of accolades. He's a great guy. I would never say it to his face. Uh, but he's a very good friend of mine. He's a very fun person to have on the show and we have we just sit back and drink a couple beers and laugh uh when we do the show together so um i hope you enjoy this episode uh we've got a lot going on no we don't trying to get this thing on the video trying to be full on video it's hard right now during the during the pandemic but we're gonna make it happen we're gonna start investing some serious money into the show so with that uh, I want to thank everybody who supports the show and is a, uh, anybody who donates, if you go to our Patreon and donate, you're awesome. You're an awesome person. I really, 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 really appreciate you. Everybody who, uh, who participates in our Patreon. Um, all you have to do is go to wed, wedcast, wadcast podcast, uh, dot com slash Patreon or Patreon dot com slash wadcast. And you can donate. If you donate five bucks, that's that's like what we ask for. Five bucks. That basically is like a dollar an episode. Uh, you uh, you get a new episode every single week. But if you donate, uh, here's the deal. Uh, you will probably, and I say probably, because uh, if you look at the number of people that donate and how many weeks there are and whatever, you're going to get yourself a uh, Myopux and a leopard claw. Myopux is an electronic muscle stimulator. Just got a new one myself because I broke mine. And uh, a leopard claw, which is one of the most awesome things ever that you use. It's a multi-tool device that you use to break up adhesions in your uh, muscles and tissue to make blood flow a lot better. Uh, I use that often uh, and I use it with people. I'm always like, try this, try this. Um, my Myopux I don't want to give it away. I love it too much, and everybody has to borrow it. It's incredible because it just pumps your muscles, so it flushes all that bad blood and expediates the inflammatory process. Got to get yourself one. Check out myopucks.com and um, just see how good they are. Uh, with that, um, uh, if you haven't gotten yours yet, you will. We're working them all out. There's just a few that uh, few people that need to get them. We will get them to you. I promise. Uh, we're pretty good with that. Everybody that's ever gotten one is uh, has gotten them. Just a few people need to still get them to. Uh, what else? Um, not much. I'm going to try to make this quick. Again, I'm not performing stand-up comedy because it does not exist right now. So this is my sole job. This is all I do on a regular basis. So um, if you suffer from digestive issues like gas, bloating, cramping, even when you're eating healthy, nutritious foods then you could probably benefit from a high-quality enzyme. If you've never tried enzymes, or even if you've tried and they haven't worked, I want you to give this one a chance. As you know, I'm a mega fan of the company Bioptimizers. They're one of the few supplement companies who have the best formulations and use the highest quality ingredients, and their products work. I asked them if we could organize a great deal for all the Wadcast listeners, and they over-delivered. Right now, you can get a bottle of Masszymes for free. For free. All you need to do is pay a small shipping fee, and there's no catch. There's no tricks, no forced continuity, nothing to cancel. They're so confident in their products that they offer a 365-day money-back guarantee. So I'm positive you'll be satisfied with the results. Masszymes is a 17-enzyme full-spectrum formula with five different kinds of protease. Plus, it contains all of the key enzymes needed for optimal digestion. It contains Ostrazyme, which is a proprietary, all-natural, plant-derived compound extracted from Panex ginseng and Ostragalus that boosts amino acid absorption by 30 to 60%. Masszymes ensures that all the protein you consume breaks down 
into absorbable amino acids. So many individuals suffer from digestive issues because any protein your body doesn't break down creates digestive distress, gas, bloating, and constipation. Masszymes ensures that all the protein you consume breaks down into absorbable amino acids. So I strongly suggest you head over to their site to grab your bottle before they either run out or take down this offer. Go to www.masszymes.com slash wadcast free. That's M-A-S-S-Z-Y-M-E-S dot com forward slash W-O-D-C-A-S-T-F-R-E-E. I'm going to do that one more time. That's M-A-S-S-Z-Y-M-E-S dot com forward slash W-O-D-C-A-S-T-F-R-E-E. You will automatically get access to your unique coupon code to claim your free bottle. Limit one per household. Offer is valid while supplies last. You're going to love their products. Go now to www.masszymes.com slash wadcast free and, uh, and just tell your friends about the show so that, uh, so that it can expand. A good way to help the show is to go to iTunes, rate, review, and comment. Give us a nice review. Give us a nice rating. Help us out. It helps us in the algorithm. So uh, please do that. And uh, just enjoy this episode. I really enjoyed doing it. This is one of the ones I just, it's like, it, it, you look after an hour and 10 minutes or what, and you're like, oh my God, that felt like five minutes. So I hope you enjoy it too. Love to hear your feedback. You can message us always at wadcastpodcast at yahoo.com or message me on Instagram. I talk to everybody. We have an Instagram that's wadcastpodcast. We also have my own, Eddie Ift. So go to those and uh, just Send me some feedback on the show. Love to hear it. And uh, now, with without any further ado, it's the uh, the sheriff Hunter, the sheriff uh, McIntyre. Enjoy. <laughs> Are you drinking too? Yeah, I've had a long day. I've told everybody that below the collar, you basically have the body of a seventy-five-year-old man. But but it looks like with clothes on that I'm built like uh, Thor. Did you see that that piece of shit Chris Hemsworth just got the Hulk Hogan part for a wrestling movie? And does that make you mad because you have the hair for it? I just have everything for it. By the way, I'm recording all of this, so you just called Chris Hemsworth. Dude, do you think just – listen, I've literally met every single one of the actor, big-time actors in Hollywood, and you meet them in real life, and they claim to be six foot four, 245 pounds of muscle, and then they end up being 5'11", at best 200 pounds full of muscle. What are you saying? Are you saying 5'11 short? <laughs> No, for fucking Hulk Hogan, yeah, I'm saying you're a bitch, and that if I meet you in the streets, I'm going to slap you. Hulk Hogan put me in a headlock once, and his bicep was, like, no doubt bigger than my head. Oh, dude, that's a real massive man. I mean, if you dedicate your life to taking steroids and wearing underwear better than anybody else in public, yeah. you, could do, you can do that to other men. Like The Miz. The Miz, that guy's a douche. I don't know how he made it as far as he has in life. It makes me hurt. It, my, my, my stomach's in knots. Anytime I see him on social media, I'm like, how did this guy make it past the filters? Like, I feel like these are the, the babies that get killed when they're younger just because they weren't supposed to survive. The food chain just gobbles those kind of kids up, but he made it all the way to the top. Kept going. He, uh, my father-in-law watches the worst movies. Like he, it, uh, he'll be watching a movie and I'll go, what's this movie? And he'll be like, it's about these guys and they, they rob a bank and then they kill everybody and uh, they beat everybody up before they kill them. And I'll go to Rotten Tomatoes. And then they find out it was the brother all along. Yeah, but he'll, I'll go to Rotten Tomatoes and it'll get like a 2%. And like a three, yeah. I showed him a couple really good films. I showed him uh, Uncut Gems. and uh, I just finished that the other night. That so, shit's intense. Yeah, my father-in-law was like, this is the worst movie I've ever seen. Anyway, the other day I walk in and he's watching a movie. That <sighs> the star of the film, The Miz. <laughs> yeah, I know. Dude, two, two people who are in my life very often nowadays, like one of my training partners and my girlfriend, they literally watch the worst fucking movies. And I, every time I speak up, they're like, dude, why are you being such an asshole? We watch your movies. 
I like that's because I have good taste. Yeah. I have good taste, and they make me feel like bad people when I have to share with them that they have terrible taste. Have you watched Tyler Nilsson's film? Who the fuck's that? Tyler's been on the podcast a bunch of times. Oh yeah, I've heard of him. Yeah, his his oh. movie, uh, him and Michael Schwartz made. They're both uh, like Tyler doesn't belong to any CrossFit gym. He just like hops. From like Deuce to Paradiso to Kenny Canes. He's just, he's like everywhere. He's ubiquitous. He, Tyler's like a hand model. And somehow he directed one of the best films I've seen of the year. By far. What's it called? It's called the, uh, oh fuck, with the, the uh, Peanut Butter Falcon. Oh, that movie's sick. Yeah, he, Tyler made that. Okay, fair. That guy's a legend. With another guy from Oak Park, from Kenny Canes CrossFit Gym, Michael Schwartz. I just want you to, like, first of all, Shia LaBeouf, Shia LaBeouf was one awesome. of the greatest. Was awesome. One of the greatest. Yeah. He is a legend. And that storyline in general, and it has wrestling in it, which I'm a huge, huge fan of to begin with. Any, so, any, also, anything that's done on the bayou, I'm obsessed with. And any, have you, Fuck. Wa- have you watched Outer Banks yet? On no, Netflix? No, I heard that sucks. Dude, sucks. Is it good? It's amazing. It's like it's like a guilty pleasure. It's like watching the Goonies for high school kids. Like they go on this like treasure hunt and they're just like partying and doing coke and fighting and it's awesome. That was my life in Connecticut, dude. I don't think you understand why I went to jail so many then times. Then you will love it cuz it's like these guys are riding ninjas around and and stealing boats and fireworks and it's awesome. Yeah, that was a good life. Oh, I thought it was just kind of like a like a fuck boy, you know, uh, show, like influencer show. I don't know. I can't watch any of that kind of shit where it's just it's like the teeny bopper show of the year. But maybe it's just because I've been jaded and I only watch movies with Mel Gibson. Well, how about this? Think about this. Every time there's a sports hero that gets big, it to some extent. That whatever Hollywood producers think, well, they've got a huge following. We should have them star in a movie that revolves around their sport. And then that movie will sell to all the fans of that sport. So they did like Jim Cotta with Art Connor. Have you ever seen Jim Cotta? Mm-mm. Oh, my God. Go watch it tonight. It's Bart Connor was a gymnast. They make a movie where he goes to like some medieval town and all these like mongoloids chase him. And he does gymnastics to fight them. Like he'll there'll be like a there'll be like a pommel horse in the middle of town and he'll like jump on it and kick them from doing the like whatever those are called, the figure eights or whatever. You're telling me the mud run chance on his way to getting his own TV show? Yes. Or Rich Froning. Rich Froning is the most boring person in the universe. But I guess if you just gave him like random objects to like clean and jerk into your face, I guess it could be an action movie. (laughs) What else would you fight with in CrossFit? What else would I fight with? You just like take a pumpkin and clean and jerk it into someone's face, or like you climb, take like a branch and then you just like dumbbell snatch it into someone's face. How long till the Slippery Sisters make this movie? God, I hate those dudes. <laughs> I I shot. I sent you that screenshot of me offering to fight them both in a boxing match, <laughs> and they refused to look at it. And I know they saw that I sent them a message. You can like click, and you could see that someone wrote you something. You could see the beginning of the sentence. And I basically start off by offering to fight them. And <laughs> so they, they will not engage with me. They won't. They wouldn't come on the show. Uh, they were supposed to be guests one time. And I think they didn't come on because you shit on them. And uh, so I blame you. All the time. I blame all the you time. for ruining my show. Dude, I don't understand why all of a sudden people who just have a camera get a hall pass. Like, there's a ton of shitty people in this industry and only reason why people hang out with you just understand you're being used because these people want free pictures from you hey i don't care but i fucking take pictures with my iphone that's how like a normal person that's how the business works and they're shitty people and like that's why cancel culture is kind of weird like everybody one of your one of your uh one of your favorites was brought down yesterday or two days ago there was an la times article who 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 brian callen who is a friend of mine I'm not a friend favorite of mine. I, I've I've just wanted to get involved in that like a little association and fight them. <laughs> would you fight? I just don't. Would you fight Brendan Schaub? I've offered so many times. Really? So the guy, the guys who own Pure Spectrum, they have a partnership with him. 
I have a partnership with them. I'm like, guys, what's the big deal? I get a bloody nose. Maybe I pass out for a few minutes. I've passed out for a few minutes many times in my life. I've had a bloody nose many times in my life. I was like, but maybe I'll fuck that back. Tear it up. So just give me a chance. Yeah. Um, I think he's, uh, I think he's out of the game though. I don't think he fights anymore. Yeah, but I'm not a fighter right. I, and I respect him completely. Like he obviously is a better fighter than me, but I'm just hoping that like I have this like haymaker opportunity of knocking him out. And what's that? More is going to happen. We just have some fun. Yeah. You roll it. He is. He is. You get to he do is your way fin- bigger. He's way bigger than I am. Way bigger. Yeah. And you I'll get, give him. And you get to do trip. your favorite thing in the world, which is roll around in tight clothing with other men. There's nothing wrong with that. People go to the Olympics for that. What have you done with your life? All right. Hey, calm down. You don't have to attack me just because I didn't. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not attacking you. Just because like, I never made the Olympics. I'm just saying, like, if we're going to put everything on the table, there's people who go to the Olympics for what you're teasing me for. And then there's people who go to, like, bars filled with degenerates and build their lives off that and take income off of people's beer, like, you know, beer tabs. Mm. Mm-hmm. You started it. I don't. I. You know what? I wasn't even listening to you. What'd you say? Nothing. The internet connection so shitty. You probably missed half what I said. No, I got it. The internet connection's actually pretty good. I'm sitting here in the Bingle Bus right now, hiding from my family. I'm hiding from Colin because I live uh, above his garage. Um. I, so is that a guest house, guest room? What is it? It's. I mean, it's the probably like one of the nicer places you could live in Malibu, but it's above his garage. How long till he finally gives in and lets you stay there permanently? <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm waiting. No, honestly, I wouldn't do that to him. Like, I'm I'm looking every single day, but I don't know if it's just a cocktail of like it's summertime. Obviously, that's a very very opportunistic time. Like, it, it's a time that everybody wants to be in Malibu. It's beautiful, like you know, sunny sandy beaches. Um, and COVID's like pushed everybody out of the city. There's literally like six listings in all of Malibu, all of 27 miles of coastline. There's six listings. Houses, for- houses go up for sale in my neighborhood and literally are under contract that day. Yeah. And uh, I, I can't even begin to tell you, like I'm going to be honest with everybody who's listening to this uh, podcast. I'm looking to spend $6,000 a month right now for just uh, a one to two bedroom with a garage and it's not like the nicest place you've ever seen it's it's like decent and that is putting me in a tough spot because let, there's let me, six let, places let me tell the listeners why you're looking for a place because you the place you're living which is an amazing amazing estate uh with it's like a compound uh the owner of the compound won't let you back in because you are the virus I am the poster boy for the virus. Are you starting to wear a mask yet? No, dude. I wear a mask where it's appropriate, but like I don't wear a mask. Like I, I, I went to a race today. I did a trail race today. Only twenty people were invited. We had a two minute um, window before everyone could run next to each other, so you didn't stand next to anybody ever. And the only time you'd stand next to somebody is if you pass them or they're passing you, and that's it. Like I'm not going to huge like raves and nightclubs and shit with my mask off. I go into the grocery store with my mask on. I go train my client. I come work out in the gym with my girlfriend or Cullen. And then I go like, that's it. I don't really have a lot of opportunity to be around people without masks. There's just not the opportunity. Um, well, that's good to know. I, cause I'm the same way. I don't wear a mask unless there's other people around. And I, I, I mean, I think it's stupid if you wear a mask when there's no, I was surfing today. I'm not going to wear a mask. Uh, no, but I mean, my circumstances are not, they're not that bad. I miss living in Colorado where it's like, nobody gave a fuck. Like you had to wear it in the grocery store. And then other than that, it's like, bullshit, do whatever the hell you want. I just got back from Colorado. Things have changed. Everyone. Well, maybe it did. Maybe it did. But everyone, I was there two, a month everywhere, and a half ago. And everywhere I went, every building had a sign on it that said, do no not, service. It, you're not coming in. I heard them yell at people in one store I was in. They're like, hey, hey. You know, in Telluride, they were like, you're not allowed to come in here unless you've got a mask on. Get out. Get out. And uh, the guy's like, oh, come on. She's like, no, no. Get out of here until you, and you can't come back until you have a mask on. Then I went to Utah. Nobody had a mask on in Utah. Nobody. Nowhere. They're, mo- they're, they're Mormons, dude. They're invincible. They have magical underpants that protect them 
from the virus. Did you know that? Do you know Mormons wear magical underpants? I wouldn't doubt it, dude. I went to Utah and like everybody was a 10. Everybody was a 10. I was like, what do you guys do? I will do anything. I was like, if I have to go to temple to be one of you guys and then procreate with one of you people, it's, I'll do it. I don't care. It's like the Aryan race. Um, they're all blonde, every, blue eyes. Every guy is six foot two to six, six foot to six foot four. Every woman is like five, seven to five, ten. They all have hourglass figures. Like everybody was gorgeous. I was like, what the fuck? That's what happens in a cult. I, should, I never should have moved back to California. Well, I did a conference one time where I performed for a whole bunch of college kids and then they buy me afterwards. And uh, these girls came up to me after the show and they were like really, really pretty blonde girl. And they were like, oh, my God, you're so funny. Oh, my, you're so funny. And I go, oh, bring me to your school. And they're like, no way. And I was like, why not? They're like, we go to Brigham Young. There's no way you could ever perform at our school. <laughs> yeah. Um, I work but, for dude, a guy. If, 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 I, you, if you had to just spend the rest of your life just not swearing and abiding by a couple like rules that you're not very, very comfortable with admitting to in public and you got to live with just like the most gorgeous and pure spirited people in the entire world, would you sacrifice what you're doing right now? Hold on. No drinking. No drugs. No caffeine. No Some- – no Dude, sometimes sometimes I drink and do drugs around people because it's not they're not as fun. I remember when I was younger before like sex or any of the other things came into play, you didn't need drugs or drink. You like skateboarded, you like played in a cardboard box. A cardboard box filled your day with like an infinite amount of fun. Now you realize how boring people are and then like you next thing you know like you're in a bar in Thailand having sex with a tranny because you've just like really run out of options to excite yourself. Sure. I mean, you do have to up your level of the what releases your dopamine and you get like you need to expand your buzzes. And that's that's a problem with society. But I will tell you this. I realized this week being in Colorado and Utah and all these places that like those people have it right. It's like all recreation, all play, 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 play. That's what I do all day long. Yeah. And if you play, you got to figure out you figured out how to make a living. Most people can't figure out how to make a living out of play. Well, it's interesting, dude. Nowadays, you can. The other day, this is a crazy story. I'm up in the mountains. I'm, I'm riding bikes with Ryan Fisher in the middle of nowhere, Malibu. And can you hear me, by the way? Yes, I can hear you fine. Okay. Sorry, you just stopped moving. So I'm in the middle of nowhere, Malibu, Six, way up in the mountains. Excuse me. And I get a flat tire. And I'm probably about 12 miles away from the coastline in a foggy morning at like 9 a.m. in the woods. I was like, this is going to suck, dude. I cannot get out of here. I can't walk out of here because I'm in bike shoes. Like, this is terrible. All of a sudden, I run into a van, and there's this kid there. And I say, hey, man, do you mind giving me a ride down to the bottom of the hill? He's like, totally. 20-year-old kid literally started, like, wanted to work on his health. So he looked up a bunch of things, found out that, sun was like one of the most important things for your body to get energy and heal your body. This is like Bobby type stuff. Kids 20 years old has a blue blocker um, sunglass company called Ra Optics, R-A Optics, and it's killing it. Are you sure this isn't Ronnie Teasdale that gave you a ride? I know. I know, I know, I know. But dude, it's just so insane. You literally nowadays, more than any other time in your life, could use your body, your mind, your physicality to create businesses and opportunities that you and and afford yourself to live like uh, in the mountains at any point in time. This kid literally travels around between Sanitas and Malibu and just spreads the word about his uh, sunglass company. Obviously, it's hard work, but he, I just took him up a mountain the other day, and he had the time to do it because he's able to use – He's got that kind of free space. Well, you could literally it, it's, start a business it's, it's, from your phone. You're right. And now more than ever, I mean, if, when you talk about companies that I just was listening to a podcast today about who's losing money, who's making money, the like a buddy of mine owns a bike shop in Philly. And I said, how are things going? He goes, dude, we're having like the biggest year we've ever had. People are buying bikes. People are getting outside. People are doing all kinds of health oriented outdoor shit. And I think people are realizing they're fucking happier. And all this bullshit that like, and I'm not an anti-capitalist, but you can get caught up in the rat race where people brainwash you into thinking you need to work, work more, more, more. You need more money. And then I, I've got, you know, friends and family members that 
you know, they work their entire life and then all of a sudden it's like that Dalai Lama thing. They've lost, they've made all this money and they've lost their health in the process and they use the money to buy their health back. Um, it's, it's just, that's what, that's what I make my money off of now. Yeah. Those people. Yeah. And it's sad because I spend time with them. I say, why, why do you do all this? Yeah. And they can't explain themselves and then they have to have me to hold their hand. And I'm like, well, like, and I, and, and I sympathize because I'm like, I don't, you, you could do this on your own. I say this to them. They're like, well, I like working with you. And I was like, well, you could work with yourself. And, but the, it just no, doesn't but You happen. know what it is? Those people, money's a drug. Money's absolutely a drug and people start making money. And when you can make money and then it starts coming and it coming, it's like being, it's like gambling. All of a sudden this money's coming in. You don't want to stop because you're getting a dopamine drip from the money. And you're going more money, more money, more money, more money, more money. And then you let everything go by the wayside because nothing else is going to give you that buzz. So, no, I get it. You know, you look at how healthy do you think Tim Cook and uh, Bezos and I'm sure they're healthy, but like. Dude, have you ever seen the before and after pictures of Jeff Bezos and Peter Thiel and Elon Musk before they got rich? They all look like thin and sickly, and now they all are on some kind of human growth hormone, <laughs> and they're, they're like twice the size of who they used to, what they used to be. It's insane. It's so funny. There's this one picture of Jeff Bezos. It's like him, like all sickly and skinny, and it's like I'm Jeff Bezos, and I sell books. And then it puts it next to him, and it's another picture of him currently, and he's all jacked. And he's like, I'm Jeff Bezos. I sell fucking everything. <laughs> <laughs> like, I love that these guys are not afraid in the least bit, though. You know, they're like the smartest men in the world, and they are not scared to inject testosterone into their body. Because they have doctors, the best doctors in the entire world. Yeah. But they say, the, hey, how, how do I look like I'm 30 if, when I'm about to crash 60? If we've learned one thing from this pandemic is that even the best doctors in the world don't know shit. Because, I mean, like, I trust science and everything. But everybody's throwing their arms up and going, I, we think this, we don't think this, we know this, we don't know this, statistically this, statistically that. I, I The last newspaper, the last paper I did in college was on, on performance enhancers and whether or not it should be allowed in sports. And it, it, you could pretty much, they had enough science like 30 years ago to create the best athletes, enhance health, like health and longevity all that kind of stuff. They were testing this stuff during the Nazi era, especially on their troops and everything like that. And then it became very big in sports after they realized like it was so beneficial to increase sports. And now it's back towards increasing longevity. So it's come like full circle multiple times. Where did you, uh, wait, you wrote this paper at uh, DeVry? DeVry? DeVry. I don't, is that like a funny thing for like camp, uh, university doesn't exist? It's it's like one of those like technical schools that you just like sign up off of television. <laughs> yeah, basically. Where did you go to school? I went to University of Montana, then Rhode Island College, then CCRI. Why three different schools, Hunter? Mom was after I finished and decided I don't want to be a model anymore and I wanted to go to college. Where, where was the first one? All of the, Wait, Montana, what happened there? Did you fail out? No, no, I was in rehab and I had to leave because I had to go sent, get sent to another rehab. Okay, so Montana, who? where's that one? Is that That's not Bozeman. That's in... Uh, Missoula. Missoula. That's University of Montana. No, that's... Yeah, as I said. It's not known as a party school, but you've found a way to make it into one? Dude, there's like 20, 30,000 kids in the party... The, the, the parties were insane. It's the best parties I've ever been to at any college. Really? Yeah, dude. Kegs and eggs on Saturday morning for football games was fucking insane. Like, the entire state of Montana came for the football games and RVs and everything. They'd have a stadium, like 20, 30,000 people. And those people pre-gamed and then went afterwards, outwards to go party. Yeah, that's, so that was that's on, every college. That was on, I know, but... Dude, then you go to URI. URI's football team sucked. Uh, Rhode Island College didn't have a football team. Like you know, it was just a big football school. So maybe if I went to any other place, it would have been the same. Were you in a sport at Montana, or were you just competing with alcohol? Just rehab, and then I went, 
And then I was on academic pay- probation in Rhode Island. They wouldn't let me participate because my grades, because I never did any school work in what high school. What sport would you have done? Oh, I would have wrestled and ran. Okay. And you could at a college level? I would have killed people. <laughs> what would your event be in running? Uh, I probably would have had to have done like the 5K in track. Really? And, yeah. I wasn't fast enough. Like I may have at best become like a 410 to 415 miler. Um, maybe a little bit faster, but I could have become like a probably like a low 14 um, five care, maybe, so, maybe so high 13 watching you run. Uh, and I'm not being, I'm not putting you down, but I noticed like, cause you, you're phenomenal, but you have a lack of speed. Have you ever done any like hardcore speed work? Body doesn't work that way. It's like, if I put all of the time in the world, this is what Chris Hinshaw says. He's like, you need to work on your fast switch muscle fibers and that's going to make you better. The body doesn't work that way. It's not like if you all of a sudden work on your fast switch muscle fibers that you're going to increase your 5K speed. It just doesn't work that way. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't, dude. You don't fucking know shit. I know shit. I know that if you did more sprinting, more sprint work, that would that would make you a faster long distance runner. It just doesn't work that way. I've worked with – I literally have trained with the world record holder and the American record holder in the marathon. I've trained with the – like. Is that Ryan Whatever Hall? The fuck. Yeah, Ryan Hall. I've trained with Olympians. I've trained with multiple Olympians in running. They don't do that shit. Like they, they don't. Do- they don't because they might not need it. But I'm. I'm. I'd love to sit and watch your. Dude, technique. it's not like if all of a sudden if I needed it that they, they don't need it. It's just all of a sudden because I'm like a a B C tier runner that I need to do more of it. It doesn't work that way. You have a certain amount of muscle fibers in your body. You can train whatever you want to do. It will increase it. But like. It's not like all of a sudden if I did tons of – like I did 1,000 snatches at 95 pounds in a training session that all of a sudden I would start snatching 300 pounds for my one rep. You mean to tell me like – so let's say you run the 100-meter dash in like 12 seconds or something. You mean to tell me that if I can't get you below an 11-second or like – you're probably – it's twelve five or something. If I could get you to like an 11-1 or an 11-200-meter dash – Eleventh. You mean to I've tell done, me that I've wouldn't... done I've done over speed work on treadmills with that guy Rich Diaz, and it certainly does help because it has you recruit more muscle fibers and everything. But the reality is, so many people think that they're going to train that stuff and it's going to make them better. But it's also you about, be better... it's also about myelin. I mean, you're you've got to uh, you've got to get your ner- your your nervous system has to be able to understand how to run that way. I'm just telling you the truth. If you want, you're, you're more likely to hit your 5K goal by hitting high mileage than hitting track workouts. Mm, that's interesting. I would. I. I. It's not interesting. It's true. I tend to believe there are going to be people that would. You, you are a comedian, mm-hmm. and I am a professional runner. If yeah. I wanted to make, if I wanted I'm to, also, like, just I'm also 20 years older than you, and I could probably still beat you in the 100 meter dash. But that's not my event. I literally get paid hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to win events that I'm good at. I don't get paid to sit here and argue with you about the potential of making maybe no, beating you in a hundred meter hurdle. I was just trying to help you run a little bit faster. I'm, I'm I literally I sit and have these dude. What do you think? Piles of books here, piles of books there. I just read about strength and conditioning and sports conditioning. More often than anybody you probably know. Maybe your buddy Kenny Cadence maybe like matched me in reading. But every other jerk off that you have on this podcast is literally taking a CrossFit L1 cert, took in a couple cycles of steroids, went to the games, and then tore a ligament in their body. And now they're retired working in like Rancho Cucamonga. So, and you're talking to them on a podcast. So you know more than Ryan Flaherty? Uh, no. But Ryan, Flair- Ryan Flaherty from Nike literally works – with he talks about trap bar deadlift and a couple other things for his runners. No, and he no. doesn't put he doesn't no. put his hands on the best marathoners that he has. No, he he, he works with everyone. He works with the top uh, Nike athletes. He doesn't put his hands on those guys. Okay, well, I mean, hopefully not. But uh, uh, my point is, 
Uh, I I would even believe that if I asked him, he would say differently too. Fine by me. All right. Uh, listen, get him on the call with me, and he and I can wrap it out as as much as we want. He I'll no, argue with him till the time. To, he, has no he doesn't have time for you. Has no time. Of course he doesn't. <laughs> Of course he does, because he's spending so much time doing other things, and he is obviously he's going to come here on the podcast, fill you with all the information because you're, you're important to talk to. And then all of a sudden, for me, just a phone call with somebody who's a great professional athlete, he just doesn't have that time. Have you contacted him? Yeah, I've contacted him multiple times, and he just responds back to one word text. <laughs> if I had a podcast that might get him late or something like that, it, maybe, maybe he'd come on. Hey guys, are you looking to lose fat, build muscle, maintain, or optimize your performance and recovery? Well, I got the place for you to go. It's the RP Diet app, and it can help you towards any goals you may have. This app builds you a customized diet based on your goals, timeline, lifestyle, training, and individual body type. It constantly adapts via recommended weekly diet adjustments based on your progress and goals. Though you have the power to speed up, slow down or stay on course with your diet metabolic learning yep that's what i said metabolic learning adjusts your future diets based on your results from previous diets with powerful algorithms made by top industry sports science nutrition experts uh this app i'm i can't say enough about it it's it's it coaches you and helps you stay on course it's got a food diary to keep track of your meals Automated meal timing to optimize your progress and reduce your hunger. Meal reminders to help you maintain the diet. A shopping list to simplify weekly meal prep if you choose to do so. All you got to do, download to start your 14-day trial available on Android and iOS. You're going to use the code WODCAST to get your first six months at $9.99 a month Versus the regular fourteen ninety nine a month, you're going to save about five bucks, everybody. Five bucks a month if you use our code Wadcast. Very simple. Go to this website www.rpdiet.app. App. That's www.r as in Richard, p as in Peter. Diet. Dot app. Got it. Rp. Diet. Dot app. Um, I'm telling you, this 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 app will change your life. It's got these advanced algorithms that are going to customize your diet constantly, and it's going to adapt your inputs, your metabolism, your progress, and it's got compliance tracking and reminders that keep you on track and help you stay accountable. If you are serious about your diet, you're serious about your training, then you better be serious and go out and get the RP Diet app. Check it out again. It's rpdiet.app, and make sure you use the code WODCAST to save yourself five bucks a month on it. Your buddies all want to do the uh, 68-mile run again. I'm sure they do, but they're not going to finish it, so I'm not going to get invested. (laughs) I am not doing it again. I cannot. There's no sense of accomplishment of doing that twice. I don't know how people do shit twice or three times or four times. Like, once you've done it, it's over. I will, however, ride it on a bicycle. This this will be my fourth time doing it, and I, I don't get tired of doing it, but I will not spend the amount of months of text messaging and coordination that I put into this last one to have the level of attrition that we did last time. Yeah. Okay, so. 13 said they would come. 11 showed up. Six finished. Five finished. Your numbers are Five all finished? Up. You're so drunk. Five no. finished. I think 14 showed up or 16. No, 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 no. 11 showed up. I can show you the fucking picture. Only five quit or I mean, only six quit. I guess so. I little so. Hunter. Ne- I don't even think Little Hunter ever started. <laughs> we <laughs> I never, think we never, we saw, never him. saw him once. Not once. <laughs> From the start, everybody started running. Every, we, we're there. at What was it? One in the morning or something when we started. And it's dark. No one could find. We all got together. We took a couple pictures. We went go, and we were supposed to start at a brisk hike to like get a good pace going. And everybody starts running like it's a race, and I'm like, I don't want to be left behind. But two guys stayed behind, and we never saw them. <laughs> that was Marco and Little Hunter. I I think they had sex in the woods. 
Uh, it, it sounds like a better time than we experienced. Yeah. All right. So you will you bike it? Yeah, dude. I just I I'm in really sick biking shape. That guy, uh, Fisher and I signed up for ride across America. We're gonna race across. So, so the I've more had, biking I get, the better. So I've had two people on, three people on this show that have done it. Um, one, my neighbor uh, Jason Wynn has done it with Laird. I think he did it. And then uh, my buddy Winston Fisher's done it twice and won it uh, in the four man team and the eight man team. And it is. It sounds like the worst race ever. I love that shit, though. Four man sounds absolutely, utterly impossible. You go, you know, you go twenty minutes, full sprint, not sprint, but like as fast as you can go for twenty minutes. Then you get on the bus and you hang on the bus for an hour while the other three go, and then you're back out there, nonstop. So you never have a like night's sleep or three hours off or anything. You get one hour what? breaks. I don't. I, it doesn't make sense to me because what they sprint for twenty minutes at maybe twenty five miles an hour. Yep. I just think that you'll drop off over time. I I was suggesting to the guys that we do two hour stints. No, they do. Look, they, he's got these guys have it down to a science how to win it. And I'll tell you what, they have money behind them too. So they have like massage therapists and everything on his bus was like a custom like, you know, like a $200,000 bus where they had all kinds of crew taking care of them. You're waiting there for the guy to ride up full speed and you kind of like it's like a, a baton handoff. You take off sprinting as he pulls up fast and you guys cross a lot and boom, you go. And, uh, I forget towards the end, one person got hurt too. So it was down to three of them, but I mean, they get across the country in like four days or something, five days. It's crazy. I'm I'm stoked. You're going to do it. Yeah. Why not? They're going to spend a shitload of money. Well, we'll probably get sponsors behind. It probably costs like forty thousand dollars for us to do it. Keep going. I've done the math. Keep going. No, no, we're not going to buy all this jag off equipment like your friends do. They're like, yeah, we needed to have a twenty thousand dollar bike, and Juan Nando is my hairstylist. He had to come too, and then you'll never win. <laughs> we're just going to do it, dude, and we'll probably win because I guarantee your friends can't beat me on a bike. Uh, so, who's your other two teammates? Or are you going to go eight, man? No, we're going four. We got Ryan. We got his buddy out of uh, Newport Beach. And we we're going to have that guy, Nick Bear, that I did a project with. But I think uh, he can't do it because he's still trying to focus on his marathon. So we'll get one other psycho biker. It's not me. Hold on. I got I to gotta open some windows. I'm in the bus and I'm like burning up. Uh, Izzy will be like, oh, there it is. The doors are open. Time to go ruin the show. That girl is, uh, runs your life. She does. We were surfing today, and on the way home, she said, um, she goes, I ripped, Dad. She goes, someday, when I'm on TV, um... Or she goes, Mommy will be proud when I'm on TV and I'm winning trophies. And I went, you, you can't even stand up on the board. Like, I have to, like, pick her up to stand up. She's like, I rip. Hey, you know, that, the confidence is the most important part of the equation. Oh my it's not God. the board. It's not the wave. It's the confidence. I, I rip, she said. She also told me she rips in soccer and skiing. <laughs> Like, those aren't sports you rip in. Uh, <laughs> all right, so you're going to do Race Across America. I'm going to do – I'm trying to train to do um, uh, the Bear Man. I don't – what's that? So they do these like Iron Man series over in Europe that are like really hard. And uh, I thought if I'm going to do an Iron Man, which I'm going to do, why – 
do an easy one. So I looked up the hardest ones. The, the first hardest is the Norseman. Yeah, that's the one I want to do. Yeah, that's terrible because the water's so cold, and I just hate cold water. Whatever, dude. You wear a wetsuit. I don't it's care. Not it's, a big it's deal. Fifty degrees. I surf in fifty four, and I hate it. Uh, really, not that big of a deal. Okay. Well, I don't want to be in the water for. T- you're in the water for two hours. I don't want to be in the water for two hours. In there's no way you're in the water for two hours. Well, if you're a decent swimmer, yeah, the cutoffs too. Um. So, uh, uh, then in the in the bear man, you climb. Uh, was it fifteen thousand feet over one hundred and twenty miles? Yeah, that's the Norseman. No, that's the bear man. And it's, oh, oh, it, it's where they, they race the Tour de France. And then you run, I think you've got 5,000 miles of climbing over a marathon. 5,000 feet. 5,000 feet, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'd be into that, dude. I'd run that race. Well, that, they only let 200 people in. It's first come, first serve. And it just looks brutal. Where is it? Italy? It's in France. France. In the south of France. And uh, it's, it, they're doing it this year in September, so I'm going to sign up for next year. September. That's my goal. Can I do it this year? Sure, but it's this September. It's probably all filled up. No, what, did, that more. TV show you did that was the hardest races in the world? Yeah. What, what were some of them? Um, 100 mile cro- race across the high, run across the highest and driest desert in the world. Where was that? Ch- Chile. Like eleven thousand feet in the sky in the hot sun for a hundred miles across like deserts, and you're running across sand hit dunes. You're running across salt flats. How you much, run a. Mi- how much of a team did you have? Nothing. You just run on your own. I dropped out at fifty five miles. I could not do it. I did. I had IT band syndrome. I didn't run like for like six months beforehand. Um, I dropped out a lot of these things. I just was so not prepared. I had no fucking clue what I was doing. Um, but <laughs> well, you said okay because it was a TV show. Yeah, it's like why not? I was like, I've run a thirteen mile Spartan race. Were they, um, were they let down by you quitting? No, I think they loved it because I just like this big macho man just constantly crumbling on the camera. Um, so fifty five. You made it fifty five miles though. Fifty five in that one three day ski around the Arctic Circle and cross country skis. Um, swim run world championships across the Sweet well, like, Archipelago. Stop, stop, stop. Let me get, let me get through each of these. So the one we've, ac- we've done this so many times. Yeah, but I, I, I don't remember yesterday. I'm getting old. Um, so when, or you might've talked to Scott and Armin about it and they cared about it and I didn't, or I was there and I was just thinking about how I could like make fun of someone there. Um, so when you ran 55 miles through the desert, who brings your supplies? You carry it on your own. There's like a couple aid stations. It, that day started out so badly. Like the race is about to start, and I knew I had to shit, and the whole city shut down. So then all of a sudden, like this man, like he's like, "Come with me, come with me." He's like speaking in you know Spanish, and I was like, "What the fuck? I don't know where I'm going." He brings me into this hotel room. I sit down. And I take this huge turd. And I didn't look to see if there's any toilet paper, and there's no toilet paper. And now there's a trash can next to me, and it's used toilet paper. So I take like the cleanest one that I could see and wipe my oh! ass. <laughs> yeah, and I wipe my ass, and That's I barely so wipe gross. my ass. And then I run. So about a half marathon in, there's just shit smeared all over my butt. So I just I pull down on the side of the road with like cars and people passing me. I take my underwear off and wipe my ass with my underwear and just throw it on the side of the road. Now, like 26 miles in, my butthole is like red hot on fire and I'm waddling and my IT band's fucked. Then I'm running across the desert. Now I'm in salt flats. I've got no water. Like it just kept on going. And a dog, a stray dog ran with me the whole time. I don't think people talk about the, the runny, uh, the runny asshole enough. Like, uh, I think that, or like, you know, an itchy asshole can ruin your day, your night, your wh- wherever you are. And no one talks about it enough. Like Dude, my, I just ran that race today and it, my butt, butt cheeks are so burnt from rubbing against each other. It looks like someone took a lightsaber and ran it down my butt cheeks. It's just screaming hot red right Have now. Have you ever used glide? 
I do sometimes. I just didn't do it today. Like Clyde's like, you know, God's gift to earth. And now my butthole is just so cooked. What is Glide made of? Because I use it on my it, uh, my wetsuit rubs on my neck sometimes. I use it it's there, like petroleum. It, it's petroleum jelly, but it's better. It's better than because if I use petroleum jelly, maybe it, it's gone. Glide stays there. I don't know, man. I'm not a scientist. You will never chafe uh, with uh, with Glide, and uh, they're not a sponsor. I'm just telling you, it's the greatest shit in the world. When I go to Australia, guys, it ask me to I bring. Guy, surfers ask me to bring it to Australia because it they don't or they don't sell it down there, and you've got to import it, and it costs like a shitload of money. It's like, hey, can you buy me some of that Glide stuff before you come down? I um, believe it, dude. All right, so let's go to the Arctic Circle. Um, you're in Antarctica, or uh, Antarct- Antarctica? A- where are you? Where exactly? I, I was. Did- I- I flew to Iceland. No, sorry. I flew to Copenhagen. Flew to Canada, to Copenhagen, Copenhagen, to Greenland, and then once I was in Greenland, I went to another part of Greenland, Sisamute, Greenland, in the middle of fucking nowhere. And from there, I basically, uh, from there, I basically. Like you know, it's basically a town of like 200 people or something like that, and they ate. They caught a whale that day, and I was so upset. But then I basically late, later on realized like that's all they have there. So they caught this whale and butchered it, and we like all ate whale halfway through the race. Yeah. But I started cross country skiing, and I had never cross country skied before. I'd done it like <laughs> once. And it's, it's it's like 30 mile days of cross country skiing up and down mountains on on skis that are like thinner than a remote control. Yeah, and and it, this was brutal. The first day, I snapped my skis in half, and it was like 10 degrees outside. So I just started running. <laughs> I was so cold, <laughs> and I remember I showed up. I was just talking about this the other day. I was like, I had no money, and they, you, they're you, like... You had a whole crew around you, though, right? Yeah, they had a crew, but it was like such a budget show, dude. They didn't give me almost anything. So I showed up in a pair of Reebok sweatpants and a Reebok hoodie, and they're like, where's all your shit? And I was like, what do you mean, where's all my shit? I was like, you guys should have my shit. They're like, no, Hunter, you were supposed to bring like, like a jacket and gloves and everything. I was like, dude, I, I don't have money for that shit. I'm 25 years old. I was like a seven hundred dollars ski jacket and seven hundred dollars ski pants and special gloves aren't in my budget. I was like, I like to drink when I go home and I like to have fun. Like I don't have money for this bullshit. Like the dollars I make off the show go towards my life and rent, not your bullshit. So, what, so wait, wait, what what network was this show on? It was on Esquire, run by NBC. Oh, I remember Esquire. I've got a funny story about them. Well, so do I. They suck. Well, they don't exist anymore. <laughs> That's why it's funny, because they do suck. I was there the day they ended. Really? Yeah, I, I, I ended up getting in a huge argument with them, because they only paid me $25,000 for the whole year's worth of work, and I couldn't do any Spartan races or anything. And I was like, guys, I don't have any money to my name. I just got this other show, Broken Skull Ranch, and I'm going to go do it. They're like, that's a violation of your contract. I was like, well, that's cool. Sue me because I don't have any money. <laughs> so I, just, I was like, I'm going to go do the show. They're like, if, they're like, if you get hurt, you're going to ruin the show. And I was like, cool. Well, I'm either going to go to the show and not show up to your next episode that you guys are filming, or you're going to shut the fuck up and let me go. And they just backed down. And that's a, that's a, that's when I started to win well, you, all the Rugged and stuff. You had a ton of neg- – you had a – you had a ton of leverage on them because whenever a TV show starts and you start to like pull shit, they're going to have to sue you for so much money. And if you have no money to come back at them, then it's like you can't get blood from a stone. So they're going, if he stops right now, we've got to go get start all over again. We're done. So you, you had all the leverage. Um, well, I was 25 years old and like my dad's like, this contract's not in your favor. And I was like, I don't care. I was like, take me to jail, bitches. So they backed down and they ended up being like kind of nice to me at the end. But for a while I was on arguments with them all the time. Like, like the VP of NBC was on the phone with me being like, Hunter, this is going to ruin your career. You do not want to do this. I was like, I don't have a career. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Could be a dick. Um, and when yeah. we, when we made the bingle show, uh, when we shot the pilot and then we shot, shopped it around to all the different networks. 
we, you know, you go on these meetings, these pitch meetings to all the networks and your agents and your managers and everyone goes with you. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you know this, but I hate elevators and universal, uh, where, uh, Esquire magazine was, I think it was on like the 15th floor. So I got to take a fucking elevator there. I'm so angry. I get to the meeting. Uh, our meeting is at like noon and I'm sitting down. We've pitched to like three other networks. A couple were interested and we're pitching to Esquire, the Esquire network. And the guy comes into our meeting. We're all sitting around the conference table, ready to go with the pitch. And the guy comes in, the head of talent or development comes in and he goes, guys, before we say anything, I just need you to know that in 10 minutes, because we were there like 10 to noon, because in 10 minutes, the Hollywood Reporter or Variety is going to announce that we are shutting our doors <laughs> and we're closing down like we're out of business. And I go, I look at my manager, I go, I can't believe I fucking rode an elevator. <laughs> and I'm like, can't believe I rode an elevator for this shit. And my manager goes, Eddie, all these people just lost their job. And I'm like, I don't give a shit. I don't have a job. <laughs> I'm like, these guys, he's like, Eddie, Eddie, have some, geez, geez, stop it. <laughs> and I'm just complaining because I've up, like, I'm like, he could have called us last night. He could have called off the meet. Why is he? Why did they make us come here today to tell us that they're out of business? They could have said, hey, the meeting's canceled. He's like, they probably didn't know. I'm like, they knew. They knew. Now I got to take an elevator back down. This is bullshit. And the guy goes, when you go out there and you leave here, every person out there has just lost their job. <laughs> and I was like, I don't give a shit. I don't have a job to lose. <laughs> like, I have no sympathy for that. And God, that would, that would be brutal. Honestly, that would suck. Though, I mean, it was a cool network. Like it, the what the reason why we got we didn't get our second season was because Friday Night Tykes was too much too successful. Friday Night what? Tykes. It was just like about like little kids in Texas who were like five years old and were good at football. Oh, and it was, I know, it, it, and it, that's how we lost our season, our second, our fourth season. I don't think anybody ever watched that network ever. Ever, we, well, I still to this day walk through airports and people stop me. Today I was literally running a race and they were like, "Dude, you're Hunter McIntyre. I saw you on on that Boundless show." So people still know about it. Really? I swear, dude. I mean, at least in my community, which is not like the biggest community in the world, but they still know. Um, I'm surprised at how big the like fitness community is. It's weirdly like if you look at like the Buttery Brothers and their movies and how big they are, like they go to number one on Netflix. Those uh, the fittest in the world or whatever it is. Those really? movies, those movies go to number one in documentary on. Somebody was telling me because uh, oh my buddy Alby Lair the surfer, he's like, yeah my movie came out the same week as one of those CrossFit movies. <laughs> and he's like I kept getting like pushed down because of the CrossFit movie. And uh, I was like, look, yeah, there's more people that CrossFit than surf. You know, there's, 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 there's gyms everywhere. There aren't, there aren't oceans where people are close to. <laughs> it's a cash cow, dude. I mean, I, I don't know what the hell is going to happen after all this. Um, what's going on right now. I think a lot of people are too stupid to see that, uh, you know, Eric Rosa coming in was just like a pass off of the baton to save the business immediately. And, you know, uh, Greg Glassman's going to get off and he's going to get paid a shit ton of money. And the business is, unless they, they, they're going to have to fire everybody internally, I think, and start from scratch to start to really give this thing like an opportunity to really be run well. And I think that, uh, CrossFit's going to like change as we know it. It could potentially end up becoming better, but, uh, especially with what's going on in the world right now, CrossFit's probably going to lose 30 to 50% of all CrossFits in the United States, if not globally. I don't know. I feel like they're coming back because of him. I think you have a humongous uh, misunderstanding of what's going on right now. No, I think a lot of them are coming back, and I also think, though, that the a lot of No, no, no. I'm not, they may come back and try to sign up, but I'm talking about covid Oh yeah, is literally going to shut them down. Oh, I that I was just going to get to. I was going to say if anything shuts them down, 
the economy is in a fucking, especially this week when the stimulus package, like everybody loses their unemployment and everything. It's just going to start fucking like just flushing down the toilet and people. Which which CrossFit do you know that's stacked full of cash? None. Okay. I knew I was friends with the guys who own solace and solace is like such a busy business and they just, it wasn't like it, it was always having trouble making money, dude. It's just like, it's, it's such a hard model to make money on. And they were fucking packed all the time. Yeah. I think, uh, every owner I've ever talked to has said your clients look at you and think, Oh my God, $250 a month. You've got all these members. You are killing it. And they're like, it's not true. It's not true. They always say that. I don't I, talking to the alchemy guys, the guys that run Alchemy 365, which is the, the – they were former CrossFitters that now have like a yoga yoga CrossFit thing. They just realized that like you need more people in a smaller space where you're paying less rent and you can bring in more revenue. And it was just – it was all about – it wasn't all about, but they were smart guys and they were just like, if we want to make money in this, what kind of workout is going to make a lot of money? And they they did the math. They looked at like – you know, Orange Theory and Soul Cycle and all these places that have figured it out. And, you know, CrossFit just takes too much equipment and too much space. And I'm sure there are gyms out there that the are The equipment's profitable. huge. The equipment's expensive. People get hurt. It's just like, <laughs> it's, it's tough. I mean, like, you're training people like professional athletes for 45 minutes a day. And for the other 23 hours and 15 minutes of the day, they live like crazy people. They hop right in their car. They go straight to work. They eat candy all day and drink coffee the rest of the time, sleep less than they should, and never stretch. And then they show up the next day, and they're like, all right, guys, we're doing one rep max back squats. And then all of a sudden, they pop their lower back. Why are you talking about me? Dude, that's you to a T. I make fun of you all the time around my friends. I was like, this guy talks about fitness all the time, just like CrossFitters. And then neglects every other part of the day that's going to actually influence him being in shape. So you don't understand me. What do you think I've done today so far? You hung out with your daughter and then you probably had your son. Your daughter screamed at you for like four hours straight. Your do- your son cried for like four hours straight. Then you took Izzy to the beach and then you came home and then you got yelled at by everybody in your house for four hours straight. And now we're on the call together. Okay. What about the 10 mile run I did this morning? I doubt you ran 10 miles, but that's probably I, the first you... I do, you, too. I do, too. Listen. But I did do three. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I fucking knew it. <laughs> I did a three-mile run this morning with my son in the jogger. Uh, well, that, that's cool, dude. You're a dad now. You know what's really sad? I so work out. Two of my, I two make of sure my I closest work out friends, Two of my closest friends, two of them Mine's actually ran the trail work. with us, the, mm-hmm. the, tra- the trail with us. They're fat now. They're fucking fat. And I doubt they're ever going to listen to this podcast. I'm not going to share their names just because it's not fair. But they're fat. And I'll, they're like, dude, what's up with you guys? They're like, I'm, we're dads now. Weren't they, and, weren't they competitive uh, uh, like like Spartan racers? Yeah. And they're fat now. Well, and so, like, so you don't understand it until you have kids. Kids take priority over everything unless you're a terrible parent. And so to... to Get in the workout is really hard. Like I, I told my wife, I like working out early in the morning now when I'm up. So then stop, then stop eating so much. That's true. Um, well, I have a good wife that makes really good food every day. So doesn't matter. No, I'm saying would you it's rather, hard, would you it's hard for most people. Really to get. Good, would you rather eat really good no, food I'm saying or really, just be fat? When I say good, I mean really healthy food. My, okay, well, then that's okay. It's fair. I'll, I'll give you because people, uh, people give me shit too sometimes. Uh, my breakfast this morning was uh, steel cut oats with uh, with two scoops of protein powder in it, and then tuna fish. That was my breakfast. That's so gross. Yeah, t- tuna with the uh, primal primal kitchen uh, mayonnaise in it. Oh, uh, you don't like tuna fish? That is no. It just sounds so gross. Oh, I love I love tuna tuna fish like. Uh, Tuna and oatmeal? Like, what kind no, of barbaric no, I just, person I, are you? I ate one, then they, I ate the other. I was still hungry, so I ate the other. Then, All right, whatever. That was after my run, and then I came home. I only eat two meals a day because I uh, I fast for 16 hours. And then my dinner, my wife had grass-fed burgers and uh, broccoli and uh, sweet potatoes. 
Listen, this isn't a cooking show, but I no, appreciate it. No, but I'm it. telling you, like you go, you you eat like I eat pretty well. No, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about how my friends got fat. Oh. You're not fat yet. If you were fat, I would talk about you behind your back Don't too say and say yet. you got fat. Don't say yet. Well, for somebody who talks about working out all the time, you fucking never work out. I work out every day just because I won't work out with you because you have COVID. Dude, we're literally like 20 minutes from your house. You could work out. Colin doesn't have a COVID. He has a six pack also. I have a six pack. You want to see it? You do not have a six pack. Dude, those are six fat rolls. Maybe, maybe it is, but that is a six pack. That is a, you're, you're, you're upset now that I'm that ripped, aren't you? Those, those look like sick little frowny faces on Does, your stomach. Doesn't it look like when you buy hot dog buns? <laughs> six little frowny faces. Or something. That's looks, what it looks like. It looks like it looks like a. Uh, it looks like the saddest belly I've ever seen. Hot dog buns. What? That looks like a hot dog bun. Oh, the little rolls. Yes, yeah. now I get it now. Um, I have a six pack. For my age, I'm doing really well. Hey, uh, you're, you're doing moderately great. Moderately, in, in incredibly elite. Uh, okay, so I won't work out with you because you have COVID. And I don't want you breathing on me. And then bring it home to my children. You might as well get them, get it in their systems now before, you know, they waste the rest of their lives. They get it now and they get stronger. Have you heard, of, have you heard of ground glass opacites? I, I really don't want to talk about COVID, please. Well, I then, will do anything besides talking about COVID. Ask me anything. Then Let's just, don't, please. don't invite me over to work out with you because I think you have it. Dude. This is crazy. I'm killing it right now. You've been te- you've been tested how many times? Twice. And you didn't have it, which means you're still going to get it. <laughs> okay, so what, dude? I had this conversation with you the other day. It's like, how many times since you've been having sex have you done it without a condom? Even though you know the fact that all these opportunities for you to get a disease could potentially happen. So every time... every I didn't wear a condom every time except for two... So that means one time. There's, Eddie, do not lie to your listeners right now, okay? I will not continue this conversation because you and I have had this without a microphone running. We both know <laughs> that you've been very irresponsible, yet you still make the same decisions back to back to back to back to back. But now all of a sudden, because you could get a mildly bad cough, thanks you're for wear listening a mask to the Wadcast podcast. <laughs> Just shut the fuck up. I don't want to. Where is your girlfriend right now while we're doing this podcast? She's right. She's right there. She just walked in. She looked at me like, what did you just say? Yeah. So how's your, I'm not a bad person. How's your relationship going? It's great. I'll admit it's very crazy to think that like, you know, when you meet somebody new and then all of a sudden it starts with like the whole world against you. It's it's a little bit odd. I mean, like, we can't go out and have regular dates. Like, we've been having trouble traveling. Like, we went to visit my family, and it was very bizarre because of, like, the rules and shit that they were imposing. So it's like, it was, it, it's definitely a weird experience, but we're having a blast. Sure. Um, does she know everything about you? For the most part. Okay. Just, I mean, just the type of person you are. She knows. I'm a pretty verbally honest person. Okay. Um, I hope you don't hit her. Um, if I do, I, I want to get off the show, but, uh, my question is what races are you doing that are still going? Like, where did you find a trail race today? A friend of mine messaged me and was like, are you going to do this? And I was like, what? And she showed me and they, this company, uh, it's called tough Magoo. They contacted like the bet, like Olympic trials runners, Literally, in in the uh, 2020 Olympic trials, three of the runners out of the 10 male runners that showed up were Olympic trials runners. And the rest of them had been like, one of them taken top three at, at Western States, Spartan Race World Champion, two times over Robert Killian, myself. Like, it was a freaking stacked field. And then there was like 10 women who literally were Olympic trials runners, and we all went off. It, like, there was a cash prize and we all went off with like, you know, that time break between. 
So it was pretty cool. It was like a private race, and I where, like I really was appreciated. It? it was at Point Magoo, okay, in northern Malibu. And I was really appreciated that the guy actually put the thing on because, like, he obviously had to put a lot of work together. He obviously had to give away a fair amount of cash. He obviously didn't get that much cash in from doing it because we only had 20 runners who paid $50 a pop. So it's a thousand dollars. So it was like, wow, what a guy. And we went and had a blast. Where was the run though? From point Magoo in like all the way inland, like running up to the flagpole, like all the way across. It's probably the most beautiful run in all of Malibu. It's insane. But it wasn't, it wasn't an obstacle course race. No, no, it was just a trail race. And like, I haven't run a trail race since 2017. And la- last time I did one of those, I used to be the best guy in Southern California, and now I'm 30 pounds heavier, and I just got the shit beat out of me. So weight, it makes it tough, I know, because I ran with it, my 30-pound son in a stroller today. It does, it does. Like, I wasn't trying to, like, complain at all, but it's just, like, I immediately knew, like, yeah, Hunter, it's cool taking pictures with your shirt off and looking thick and filling out T-shirts, but it's it just doesn't work unless you're wearing football pads. Like I, I have to lose a lot of weight before I start running again. What, uh, how fast were your miles? Do you think I averaged a seven fifty five pace over 16 miles and 2,500 feet of climbing. Like if I did that three years ago, I probably would average like a six thirty to six fifteen. So it was a very big That's difference. A lot of climbing. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's going up to the top of the empire state building two and a half times. While running sixty miles, yeah, that's a, that's a that's a lot of climbing. Um, yeah, everything hurts. Uh, and that was this morning. Yep. <laughs> so, is anyone doing any kind of racing? Spartan, High Rocks. Spar- Spartan just canceled. Um, I'm going to be releasing something really big September second. So, hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, I don't get run over by a bus and everything works out. So, September second, something's going to be released that's going to really kind of take over the whole obstacle course racing industry, but they've canceled everything. They, I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble for this, but like the main race that I've been doing, I'm not going to mention it unless you really know already, but they are pushing everything back. Like everybody's pushing everything back. Uh, they just canceled mayhem today. The, uh, they, you know, they canceled that a couple right, days I'm, I'm ago, sorry, a couple days ago. Uh, they, and they postponed the CrossFit games and it's just like, everything's going down. If, if you're training for something right now, like, Continue to train with the idea that it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's hard to stay focused. I don't know how a lot of these guys are. Well, I just went to the store and just bought a bunch of beer tonight because I was like, you just canceled my world championships that I've been like building up. I, I decided to do a powerlifting block this block and do a ton of biking and hiking and running and just like get things slowly moving. And then next month I'm going to do the – like high intensity block. And then the next month I'm going to take away the weight and I'm going to do an even more intensity block. And now it's canceled. So it's like, I might as well just stay home and just start a webcam channel. The, it's like, there's, there's you, nothing to do. You'd be really good with gay men of Latvia. They would love to watch your web. Dude, I would kill it. Uh, let me ask you this. Your training that you do, the training program that you sell, is it yeah. the same thing that you do? Every single day. And it's like, you know what, to be honest, like people, like I, it it keeps on growing, which I'm like blown away by. I'm actually launching two other programs next week. One's called look good naked and the other one's just, uh, called house running. And, uh, like, you know, my training program is very effective. It's exactly designed to get the results that I want to have, which is like I said right now, guys, I want to bench 315, which I just pulled off and I want to be able to run a 430 mile. So like I had to. I'm just building up, just moving over time slowly and getting my lungs together. And now I'm going to shred off 10 pounds and I'm going to keep the strength that I have and I'm going to go to the track for the next six weeks. But like, you know, I lifted three days a week, bodybuilder style with some wads in it. And then the rest of the week was either biking or long runs. That's it. And like people are freaking loving it. I get messages every single day and it's it's on a really cool platform where – Everyone can like message each other and talk about what they did for the workout. And we're now at 230 members after four months of starting it. And the first month, we didn't have any clients. I had one client and I was so embarrassed and they quit two weeks into it. I was like, holy shit, I'm the biggest deadbeat to ever hit fitness. And then all of a sudden, next month, for some reason, it just popped and exploded. But um, that was really nerve wracking. I started it second week of March. 
Are you probably, so now, oh, that's you were on my show that week. That's why. Yeah, yeah, it's massive. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, dude, it's actually pretty fun, and how I do, never thought like I'd how be do this people, excited. How do people find it? It's called House H O H A O S Training on Instagram. So it's Hunter's Academy of Strength Training, and uh, from there. I basically, I talk about like every single week, I just talk about what's going on in our training. Um, on my regular page, I talk like, you know, I post some of my lifts and stuff, but we now have a Strava page, like everything is involved or you can just be part of the group and see what everyone's doing. It's a very interactive way for people to just talk about, you know, strength training. I think Ryan, Ryan taught me a lot about this a couple of years ago and I just was like not in the right headspace to launch the business. Like I did it for a bit. But I was like, I just was too focused on racing. And all of a sudden I realized it's like, you know what? I sat down, everything was canceled. And I said to myself, I was like, I can either allow myself to just get drunk and just kind of like hike around and have fun for the next three months, which I thought COVID was only going to last three months. Or I can pick something to train for right now and start a business right now. So I picked Murph and then I started training for, um, I started training for that and I started, I was like, you know what? Everybody loves Murph. So I'm just going to start posting about my training for it. And it just took off, man. It just was a blast. So so we're, we're creating a world record page on, uh, on the Wadcast page where we're going to have all the world records of all the benchmarks, all the hero workouts and some extra ones like King Kong and filthy 50 and stuff like that. Uh, of these workouts, which do you think you could knock off and become the world record holder of? Mm, Helen, maybe Jackie, um, some of the hero wads for sure. Um, obviously, I'm not going to do Fran. Obviously, I'm not going to do Diane, Amanda. Uh, Nancy is the one where you run 400 meters and then squat uh, 95 pounds 15 times overhead. Like I can do that for sure. Um, but then like, I don't know. I don't really know the rest of them. No Olsen submitted his Fran. And I think it's, I think I saw somebody that did it a second faster. Uh, he did a one fifty seven. Uh, well, Noah definitely has filming of it. Yeah. I mean that you got to have good filming of it to get the record up. Otherwise we won't put it up. Um, I think you should go for Helen. Can you start training for that to try to, tr- what do you think you could do Helen in? Mm, maybe six ten to six flat. Even with your big fat tits right now? No, no, no. no. Right now, I'd have to do it over like the next six weeks and bring myself down to like 195. But the way I can move, like I did a 614 uh, two years ago and I was so much weaker. The way I can move a kettlebell is so much faster and the way I'm more efficient on pull ups. So it's not, my speed's still there and just like those are the two movements. And if I take five seconds off the kettlebell swings each time and I'm just as good on the pull ups over three rounds that brings me down to a 559. So, I mean, it's, these are all, you know, maybes, but um, it's a, a potential. Uh, Travis Mayer did it in 634. Yeah, I definitely have that. That's not that big. Um, I'm just trying to see if anyone else did it faster. That's that's what we think. So I, th- I think you should, you should, that's what you should go for. Yeah, I think that stuff's really fun. I think really for the next year, I doubt there's going to be any kind of competition consistently. So I think if you're a really talented athlete, you should just kind of chase after goals that are exciting. And that's probably what I'm going to be doing. Like the Murph thing was a blast. It was completely on my own time and dime. And I just went for it. How much money did you raise? Mm, I'm going to guess like around 25 to 27,000. See, that's great. So if you could do this every week. With uh, or every couple weeks with one of these workouts and raise money to break records, that'd be great. There's there. I just gave you a purpose in life. Every couple of weeks, that's it. Doesn't work that way. Six weeks. Every six weeks, you break a record. I would probably. I could have gone straight from Helen into uh, Murph into Helen, but I, I, you know, I, I probably would need to work pretty hard. The Jackie thing would be a freaking blast. I love Jackie. That's like my favorite CrossFit workout of all time. Me, but the me, only difference me, let me between see, let me see what the world record in Jackie is. I think you said it's like five oh six. But the only difference, the problem that I have with Jackie is the amount of distance that I have to travel compared to like a 
Josh Bridges is just much more. But then people are like, you can row farther because you're taller. What do you think uh, you could do uh, it in? Best I ever did it was 5'11", I think. 5'10 is the world record. There's no way. Adrian, they did it. Adrian? Five, they did it 5'06 at, at the uh, regionals. What's his face? Josh Jason Kleba did a 506 at regionals in 20. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Here. You're right. You're right. What are you doing then? 506. Nope. There's a 457. Whoa. But is there a video of it? Yeah. I'm looking at it right now. 457. Text uh, me and I'll watch it. All right. Uh, that's pretty fast. Yeah, it's it's all on video. I don't even know who the guy is. Hold on, I'm gonna pull it up. I don't. I don't think I know this guy. Um, he's got 21 subscribers. That's big. That's big. I would totally trust that guy. Here's the comments. Oh, just a well done, mate. Yeah, 457. He doesn't have his name. Nothing. Nothing. What, Katie? All right. My girlfriend's really upset. I can't be on the podcast anymore. Why is she upset? She thinks that I have a drinking problem and I spend too much time with my friends on the phone. All right. Well, tell her you're working right now. Um, so anybody that wants to find your training. Tell her all the time. She doesn't believe it. I'm going to go in and drink a margarita and eat ice cream. Maybe you sh- I don't need any new clients. I just want you as a client because yeah. I would love to see you actually reach your goals someday. Okay. Listen. Uh, we do a thing called Paint It Forward every week on the show, and uh, the guest gives out a workout, yeah. and then the fans do the workout, and it has to be something that like you do that was like horrible or funny or whatever it is. But like we had uh, Logan Aldridge gave a workout. Did, did you hear his workout? Yeah. Do, do you know how much his deadlift and his his uh, squat clean is? Probably like two seventy five for squat clean and deadlifts like probably four fifty. His deadlift is five hundred with one hand, one arm, and he uh squat cleans two sixty or two fifty, I forget what it was, but that's, that's gnarly. That is so gnarly. And uh his workout was he did it with C T Fletcher and it was you do two hundred reps of your body weight and deadlift, but you do it in sets of uh the first first set is one, then two, then three then four, then five, all the way up. I think it's 21 sets. Uh, and he did 21 at his body weight? At his body weight, yeah. I don't know if I could do that. I think, I think, I think it's possible. But it would just get ugly up at like 14, 15, 16, you know, like putting it down, going again. Um, uh, the workout that, that Noah gave us was ridiculously hard. I, I, one guy did it. I don't know. I don't believe in these ones that are impossible to do. I like doing ones that everyone can do. Okay, so and give us some one. Can, some give, can succeed in. Give us a workout. I'll name it. Okay. It's very simple. 12-minute AMRAP. You get a 24-inch box, both for men and women, because I don't think women should be able to step over a shorter box. If they want to have a quality, they should step on the same box as we do. Wow. I'm just going to clip that right there and put that on the uh... – Instagram. Yeah. Um, take a 50-pound dumbbell for men, 35-pound pound dumbbell for women. You do two, two burpee box jump overs, and then you step over with a 50-pound dumbbell, however the heck you want. One, two. Then you go four. Then you go six. Then you go eight. Then you go 10. Then you go 12. And see how many rounds you can do. So 12, see how good a shape. 12-minute AMRAP, 50 and 30-pound dumbbell. And 35. 50 and 35. Uh, 24 inch box, Mm -hmm. two burpee, uh, box jump overs, burpee box jump overs. Then you go back over with the weight. Yep. Carry it. And then just step over, step back then put down the dumbbell. One, two, three, four burpee box jump overs. Pick up the dumbbell, step over one, two, three, four. Okay. And where, where are you holding the weight? Like on your shoulder, uh, suitcase carry? Do shoulder. Okay. That sounds awful. You asked for a workout. Everyone can do it. If you can succeed. How many rounds did you get? That's top secret. Okay. It's kind of rude of you not to set a benchmark for everyone. You asked me to donate something. I'm not going to. I gave you a workout. I don't have to give you my results. 
Why? Because you're afraid. No, not at all. Because it's very important to me to keep those kind of things close to my heart. You're such a fucking loser. Um, well, thanks for doing the show, Hunter. Well, you know what? I would prefer if I actually got to hang out with my friends instead of video chat with them. Listen, so I can't get near you. When you come over to my house, I make you stand on the other side of the fence. <laughs> seeing how you're only like five minutes down the road from me, just come over. I will let you. I will let you see me in the ocean. You can be. At, at, I'm not at, sick. At, I promise, dude. Last time we went surfing, you crashed your board into my face and I cut it. No, it was the other way around. You broke my nose. Almost, I almost lost my eye because of you. But I will. I will let you. Because you're a shitty surfer, dude. If you're on such a kook and you run to my board. Wait. Who's the shitty surfer? Just for the audience to know, Hunter surfs on a on a rainbow uh, foam board. Wearing it's called Rasta Recon Edition. Wear, wearing a uh, a triathlete wetsuit, an orange one, I think it was. Yeah, I look like a fucking beast. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I still guys that I surf with still ask about you because I'm a local legend. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, check out Hunter's uh, Instagram. What is it at? What is it? Uh, at Hunter, uh, yeah, Hunter McIntyre. I'm no, it's dude. at Hunt the Sheriff, isn't it? Yeah, dude, babe. D- say your Instagram so people can go do your 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 work. You can just type in Hunter McIntyre or hashtag dude, babe. Dude, babe. All right, all right. Well, I was just trying to help you with your business, but I already said everything. It's okay. Hunter, Hunter Hunter's Academy Strength H A O S Training on Gmail or you know, you can go to Wildcast Podcast. You can like, follow, and comment, and that helps. All right. Well, thanks. This will this will be probably – we've done 425 episodes of the show. This is around the 415th best. <laughs> you have to admit, man, you called me on a Saturday, and I've been drinking, and, like, you know, what did you expect? Tell Katie I said, run away, run away, run away. <laughs> It was really nice talking to everybody. Eddie, yep. I hope to see you tomorrow. Okay, I'll be there for the workout. Uh, right. Tell uh, or Thank you for doing the show, and uh, thanks for listening to the Wadcast podcast, everybody. Uh, you know what to do. I tell you all the time. <laughs> <laughs>